Let's go to Ouija at CBS. Thank you so much for taking my question. Um, Dr. Fauci and Dr. Walensky have both warned that the virus may mutate and perhaps into a strain that is powerful enough to evade the vaccine. Is there any way to gauge how long before the virus overtakes the vaccine? And so we understand what that means for the vaccine. Is there a way to tweak it in that situation um, uh, in order to give us protection? Why don't we start with you, Dr. Fauci, and then Dr. Walensky, if you have anything to add. Yes, uh, there is a very, very uh, long-standing tenet in virology that viruses cannot mutate unless they replicate. And so the easiest way to prevent the scenario that you're proposing could happen would be to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as we possibly can to not allow the virus to continue to circulate in the community, giving it ample time to mutate. Now, not every mutation is gonna result in a functional change, but every once in a while, you do get a series or a constellation of mutations that do that and you get a functional change the way we have seen with the Delta variant, which functionally changed because it became significantly more able to transmit. We have within our power to prevent that. And you prevent it by not allowing the virus to freely circulate, finding vulnerable targets. You protect the vulnerable targets who are unvaccinated people by vaccinating them. And when you do so, you do a very, very strong um, blocking of the evolution of variants that could be problematic. Next question. Let's go to Sharon Lafreniere at New York Times. Thank you. Uh, many experts say that the falling antibody levels that Pfizer and today Moderna cite as evidence that booster shots are needed is not convincing because people may still be protected even with those. If that's so, what is the right signal? Is it vaccinated people ending up sick enough to be in hospitals? And can the government wait for that kind of evidence before making a decision? And then secondly, I wanted to ask, what are the chances that the Delta variant will burn out, so to speak, here in a month or so, like in India and the UK? Dr. Walensky first. Yeah. I um, you know, we're going to make the decision about booster shots based on uh, a compilation of evidence, one of which will most definitely be the immune responses, as you know, but that is not necessarily known to be a perfect correlate. The antibody responses, our immune system also has T cell responses. So this is going to be a combination of evidence, both of neutralizing antibody data, as well as clinical trial data, as well as, as, well as our cohort data that monitor the safety and the, or the effectiveness of our vaccines in many different populations. Um, across the country, tens of thousands of people, essential workers, healthcare providers, long-term care facilities, people who've been vaccinated early in the process. And it will be a combination of all of that evidence that helps inform our booster strategy. Dr. Fauci, the question of um, the case count and, and right. quote. Go ahead, please. Right. So what you're asking is, when are we going to turn around this acceleration that we're currently experiencing with Delta? There are two ways you do that. You do it in the immediate sense right now by mitigation. And mitigation of the kind of things you've heard from the recommendations of the CDC regarding masking, by regarding avoiding situations, crowded situations where you can have the uh, increased capability of the virus to spread. The ultimate end game of all this is vaccination. And that's why we continue to harp on that in a very, very uh, proactive way that if we continue to vaccinate and we get that 93 million people who are eligible for vaccinations, who have not been vaccinated, if we do that in the immediate, intermediate and long term and do the mitigation right now, we will turn the Delta surge around. I will guarantee you that that will happen if we do what I just outlined. Next question. Caitlin Collins, CNN. 
Thanks so much. Several of you and the president have repeatedly cited figures saying that 99% of those who die from COVID-19 are unvaccinated and 95% around that are hospital who are hospitalized are unvaccinated. With the Delta variant, do you still stand by these numbers and do you have government data to back them up? Dr. Walensky. Yes, thank you for that uh, question, Caitlin. So those data were data that um, were from analyses in several states from uh, January through June and didn't reflect the data that we have now from the Delta variant. We are actively working to update those in the context of the Delta variant. I, I do want to reiterate, though, that based on the data we're seeing and we don't have fully updated numbers, universally, as we look at our hospitalizations and as we look at our deaths, they are overwhelmingly unvaccinated people. Next question. Let's go to Tamara Keith at NPR. Thank you for taking my question. Um, there's some reporting out there that the working groups uh, that are looking at reopening some international travel are making plans to require vaccination for international visitors. Um, I'm wondering how that would work, uh, whether it would be simply an attestation as with federal workers or whether there would be a more rigorous form of vaccine verification. And on vaccine verification, you talk about that restaurant and, and other businesses that are requiring uh, their customers to be vaccinated. How, how are these businesses supposed to do vaccine verification? Is it Wild West out there or is, are there guidelines? Why don't I take the first question on travel and, and Dr. Murphy, uh, vaccine verifications. Um, in terms of travel, and I'm, I'm glad you asked that question, uh, the administration certainly understands the importance of, of international travel. Uh, and given where, we're, where we are today, as, as Dr. Walensky showed us earlier, on the prevalence of the Delta variant, the United States will maintain uh, the existing travel restrictions at this point. However, we do have, uh, as you alluded to, agency working groups that are developing plans for when we do open travel, how do we do it in a consistent and safe way? And part of that planning is a phased approach that foreign nationals traveling to the United States may, um, there's, there's still policy work being done here, may need to have some type of a vaccine uh, requirement, but that's, that's not a decision at this point. That's one of the paths that's being looked at and considered, um, but there are, there are alternative paths being looked at at the same time. So uh, the interagency working groups are currently developing uh, a policy process, and we will um, be ready when it is the right time to uh, consider reopening travel, and that will be guided, as always, by the science and the public health. Dr. Murphy? Sure, and let me just ask, can you repeat the specific question you had on the verification? Sorry, I, I had to. I had trouble unmuting myself. Um, it's okay. the, the the question is: um, you, you guys have talked about restaurants or other private businesses um, having only vaccinated customers. How 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 are how's a mom and pop shop supposed to know how to do vaccine verification? Yeah, it, it's a good question. Well, the, the good news is that we have seen a significant movement in the private sector to develop uh, essentially vaccine verification efforts. We know this is not something that the federal government uh, is leading, but we are happy to see the private sector uh, leading and taking initiative on that. And you know, I think as more, this is gonna be increasingly important because we know that more institutions are considering vaccine requirements. Uh, we certainly have seen that in the healthcare system, uh, the vaccine requirements for healthcare workers is being adopted by more and more institutions and we expect uh, that that will continue. Next question. Maureen Grappi at USA Today. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my question. I wanted to ask about the federal assistance being offered states that are hit hard by COVID. Um, at the one of the White House briefings this week, Jen was asked if the offers have been accepted in Florida and Texas, and she called that a, quote, discussion. Is there any update on that, on whether uh, Florida and Texas uh, want any of the help that the administration is offering? We are working with uh, 16 states, and I believe there are conversations um, with 
uh, Florida. I know there are conversations with the state of Florida, and I believe there are some conversations with Texas too. But that uh, let me let me come back and, and verify that. But we're working with 16 states at this point on testing, on increased vaccination through mobile clinics, the increased use of therapeutics, uh, also assessing uh, and helping out on hospital capacity. So. 16 states across a whole range of uh, areas. Next question. All right. We have time for one more question. We'll go to Meg Tyrell at CMDC. Thank you. This is a question for Dr. Walensky, I think. Um, last week in the slides we saw from the CDC, uh, the CDC noted that Delta may cause more severe disease than older strains and cited some evidence from other countries. I'm wondering, does CDC think the data show it does cause more severe disease? And also, how are you looking at the risk it poses to children? Do you see more severe disease from Delta for them? Yeah, thank you for that question, Meg. Um, certainly in that slide deck, there were some early preliminary studies that suggest um, that Delta may potentially cause severe disease. We continue to monitor this, not just in adults, but also in children. But I do want to highlight a couple of things that um, continue to confound some of the data, and that is we have an enormous burden now of disease, so exposures are much higher. And the mitigation strategies that were used last summer, even in the winter, um, have not been employed in many of these areas that we are having uh, surges right now. So it's we're, we're working to understand the differences between exposures um, the, the, and as well as the severity of disease and working to confirm those preliminary data that might suggest so. Good. Well, thank you. And uh